Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that's spiritual light and eternal life. Get your King James Bible. Turn to the book of Matthew. We're going to do chapter 1. Some, uh, we're going to cover a couple of topics here. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18, well, prior to that, they go through the lineage, the earthly lineage. But now we're going to read about, well, yeah, well, we'll see what happens here. Matthew 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Espoused, that's just an old English word for being engaged, but they hadn't done anything yet. So, 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, hey, this whore got pregnant and we were, were engaged and, uh, you know, uh, she's pregnant and it's not me, not mine. You know, well, that would be the modern thoughts. But was Mary a whore? No, absolutely not. Well, only in the mind of the, uh, the uh, well, the Jays. Yeah, the, the Jays say she is, but uh, yeah. And depending upon which group you listen to, it was either uh, one of Satan's angels or a Roman soldier named Pantera, which uh, paid her, I think it was 20 pieces of silver. Uh, yeah, that's the kind of wisdom you can learn from uh, the Jays. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the Yeshua crowd. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's their wisdom. So, and they even call him uh, Yeshu Pantera. So... I guess they were. Uh, I guess they were watching Mary when you know the soldier paid her, and and then they knew that she got pregnant with. Yeah, that that's the kind of nonsense uh, that they teach. So Joseph, uh, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. He's going to divorce her privately because he didn't want to make a a big he didn't want to ruin her reputation but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the lord appeared unto him in a dream so here is you got an angel of the lord not an angel of the devil big difference saying now this angel saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people, not the whole world, for he shall save his his people from their sins. Do, do you see Yeshua in there anywhere? Uh, no, me neither. You see, the Yeshua crowd is a complete and total denial of your Bible. Yeah, it is. It's a total in Greek uh, denial of the Greek New Testament. Greek was the common language 
of that time since Alexander the Greek had conquered Egypt, he'd conquered the land of Israel, he had conquered the whole area. I mean, basically from Egypt all the way to India, that whole area was conquered by, well, part of India. Conquer that whole, that whole area. A huge empire. Seriously. When you find out that Cleopatra of Egypt was a Greek, you know, <laughs> makes you wonder, you know. So an angel of the Lord named him Jesus. Hmm. But you see, the Yeshua crowd are telling you, oh, no, that's wrong. Yeah, let's sit at the feet of uh, a rabbi, an unbelieving rabbi, and he'll tell you the real deal. Uh, I don't think so. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Maybe the Yeshua crowd are not his people. Now all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin, a virgin shall be with child, and shall, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Isaiah 14, a virgin. Of course, you listen to the Yeshua crowd, and they'll tell you, well, you know, that word there in the Hebrew uh, is Alma, and it just means a young woman. That's all. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean virgin. But my Greek Bible, translated into English, says virgin. And I believe the King James translators, who were scholars, by the way, they were scholars who taught at Cambridge, who taught at Oxford back when those were Bible colleges that were believers and scholars. But now you got people that uh, think they're some kind of, they, yeah, you know, they want to correct. Oh, well, you know, we're going to correct the Bible. We're going to correct it, you know. Because Mary really wasn't a virgin. She was just a young girl, you know. Yeah, that's what they want you to believe. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. You want to use a name that's Old and New Testament? Emmanuel. God with us. But they won't do that. No, they're, they're going to call it Yeshua. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. For chapter 2. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, now remember that. Bethlehem was a small, supposedly a small city in, in Judah, Judea. You know, Judah lived in Judea. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, now Josephus says that Herod, the whole Herod family, were Edomites. Esau was the father of the Edomites. I've got an entire study on this, if you're interested. Esau was the brother of Jacob who became Israel. Esau decided he wanted a Hittite, Canaanite woman for his wives. Well, two of them. Yeah. He also married a daughter of Ishmael, who was the father of some of the Arabs. And as I understand that the word Arab means mixed. Yeah. So, looks like some of the Arabs 
And the Edomites are, you know, have a link together. But the Canaanites, people don't want to, they don't want to believe it, but the Canaanites were a, a cursed satanic seed line. They, they, people just hate that. Oh no, God, God, God wouldn't allow that to happen. God wants, loves everybody, and wants everybody to be able to be saved. Well, if you don't believe in a satanic seed line, I don't care. But you'll find out one day, especially when they put you and your family to death or try, which I think is coming sooner rather than later. So I've had a lot of people disfellowship me over this, but I don't care, you know. Not saying I'm a prophet, but the prophets had a lot worse than I did. Uh, Jeremiah was thrown into a, a mud pit in a dungeon. Yeah, a mud pit. You don't want to, you don't want to be in a mud pit for a long time. It doesn't do good things for your skin. You know, ladies put mud packs on their face, but they don't leave it on for a week, you know. So, very important. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. That's part of, it was part of Judah. Judah was the southern kingdom. Israel was the northern kingdom after the split of Solomon's son. So, and they said, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. From the east. Some historians believe that these were the, uh, they were from Parthia. Parthia was a contemporary empire situated around modern-day Iran, Parthia, Persia, and that it was a thorn in the side of Rome. Rome could never conquer Parthia. Matter of fact, Parthia won a lot of battles against Rome. Matter of fact, uh, I think it was like 70 years earlier that Parthia controlled uh, the land of Israel. Matter of fact, there are some historians that believe that Parthia was born out of um, Alexander the Great, the Macedonian, the Greek, his people. I don't know how true that is, but uh, all I know is Rome tried to take Parthia, and they couldn't do it. Parthia was a mighty empire at the time. And Rome was, let's just say they were dishonorable. They would try to make peace treaties with Parthia, but they wouldn't honor them. So, yeah. So there are, pe there are people that say these wise men that came from the east of Jerusalem were from Parthia. And they would not have come just by themselves. I mean, here is they're bringing gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. They said that they had a company with them. And uh, soldiers, I'm sure, for protection. And when they showed up on Herod's doorstep, uh, Herod was not exactly happy. Now, from what I understand, I don't know how true it is, but I've read accounts that Pilate and others, like the guy that, uh, I don't remember his name, but he was in charge of Syria. Rome had conquered these areas, but they had so few troops for garrisons that there was oftentimes local revolts. And they, the empire was spread out so far that they had trouble 
Well, you got to figure every time they're fighting a war, the majority of your troops are gone away fighting. So who are you going to leave behind as a garrison? Probably your old guys like me, you know. Um, those are the, you know, guards. You know, your guards are not going to be your frontline troops. And when there was stirred up trouble locally, uh, you know, they would have to uh, get troops from other places and then bring them down later. And it might take you know, a month or two to gather troops together to quell a local disturbance. So Herod was in charge of this area at the time. He was of the Edomite satanic seed line. And uh, if you think Herod's family can be saved, well... <laughs> Yeah, I, I want you to show me one instance where any one of Herod's families gets saved in the Bible. I can show you half a dozen where God says he's going to destroy them. So, yeah, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you could show me anywhere where one of Herod's descendants or the Edomites gets saved. Yeah. So, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? No oh boy, Herod is the king set over this area by Rome. And he's like, uh, wait a minute, you mean I'm going to lose my crown? What's going on here? Saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. Now, if this is just three or four wise men, Herod would have probably had them arrested and had their heads cut off and taken their all their possessions. That's why I think that there was actually a probably a company of men there. And Herod's probably looking at this company going, hey, wait a minute, those guys are Parthians. Uh, they, they got more troops in this town than I do. So I think that's why he left him alone. Verse 3, when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. I think it's in, um, I think it's in Micah. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least of the princes of Judah. For out of these shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. I do believe that's in Micah, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Yeah, it is Micah, chapter 5. Uh, verse 1. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a uh, rod, upon the creek, the cheek, I'm sorry, cheek. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So there you go. Micah. Uh, let's see. All right, let's go back to Matthew 2, 8. Oh, verse 7. Let's do verse 
5. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judah, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, acquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Yeah, Herod is a snake. Yeah, he. I want to know where he is so I can kill him. Verse 9. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And they were, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, treasures, you know, you just don't have three wise men with a bunch of treasures traveling, you know, with out in the wilderness with robbers. No, they got. They got, a, they got people with them, protecting them. Um, and when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. Yeah, don't go to Herod. Herod is bad news. He's a goat. He's serpent sea line satanic sea line and people want you to think that believing men married unbelieving women in genesis chapter six and then they had children that were giants with six fingers and six toes of which goliath was one of them and then david took a stone and did target practice with his forehead yeah yeah you know if these people were savable the Lord would not have told Israel to go into the land of Canaan and kill them all. He would have said, oh, preach unto them the love of Jesus, because Jesus loves everybody. No, he said, kill them all. And the thing is, Christians are in a war. They don't even know who the enemy is. And their satanic pastors tell them to love the enemy. Bless the enemy. Yeah. And tell you that they're the chosen, uh, you know, the chosen. Yeah. 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 And you wonder why the church is in the mess that it's in. Verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Yeah. Herod is of the satanic sea line. Verse 14. When he, Joseph, arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. And this has reference to the book of Exodus, where, you know, Moses went and confronted Pharaoh and said, let my people go. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Do you know what the you know who's teach? That it was in Egypt where Jesus learned to perform magic yeah egyptian magic that's where uh 
Jesus learned to do all his miracles if you listen to the Yeshua crowd. Yeah. Yeah, they teach this. Yes, I've read their books. Not, I didn't read their stuff on the internet. I read their books in the public library in a predominantly you-know-who, uh, you-wish uh, city in their public library in the reference section. Yeah. Yeah, I've read their books. I used to do research. Instead of sitting around watching uh, Friends or uh, whatever, Seinfeld and football and As the Stomach Turns and General Hospital and all that other whatever. Yep, I've read their books. I know what they teach. Which is why I'm so hard on it. Yeah. 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew. He killed. He slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Yeah. Nice guy, this Herod. Yeah, kill them all. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they were not. Who was Rachel? She was one of the wives of Jacob Israel. She was the mother of Judah. Yeah. Nineteen. But when Herod was dead, all right, so Herod died, and I know where he went too. Yeah. He, he's not he's not sitting at the right hand of Jesus up in heaven. I'll, I'll tell you that. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. Do you know this is the third time that an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream? Three times. Yeah. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he, he Joseph, heard that Archelaus did reign in Judah in the room of his father Herod. Hmm, Archelaus. He was a, a son of the, that human devil Herod. Uh, Joseph, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding, being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. So he didn't want to be in uh, Archelaus' jurisdiction. He went to Galilee. Now remember, uh, Sometimes you're called by the area that you live in. Uh, for example, if you were born and raised in Texas, you'd be a Texan. If you were born and raised in New York, you'd be a New Yorker. Uh, if you were born and raised in Oklahoma, you'd be called a Sooner. Better sooner than later, right? Um, I've lived probably... Mo the great majority of my life in Florida. So most people would say I'm a Floridian, but I wasn't born here. No, absolutely not. All right, so Joseph went to Galilee. 
Remember, Jesus was called a Galilean, remember? But he was born in Bethlehem. So wouldn't he be a Bethlehem Bethlehemite? But he was called a Galilean. Verse 23, listen to this carefully. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. Remember, they called him Jesus of Nazareth? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Hmm. Now, I've had the people tell me, oh, well, being from Nazareth and being a Nazarene is two different things. That's not the same thing. Well, what is Matthew chapter 2.23 telling you? He, he dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. A Nazarene is somebody from Nazareth, right? Who, uh, who is a famous Nazarene? Hmm. Let's take a look. If you look at the Hebrew word where they get uh, Nazareth from, it comes from the word Nasar, N-A-S-A-R. Uh, it means to be set apart or consecrated. And wasn't Jesus set apart and consecrated to be uh, the sinless offering for sin, the Lamb of God? Oh, yeah. And some people will say yes, some people will say no. But uh, Nazareth and a Nazarene and a Nazarite, which like a Nazarite vow which is what uh, Samson had. Uh, they made a vow, a promise before God. You know, Samson was a judge of Israel. And, you know, they said that they wouldn't uh, cut his hair and he wouldn't drink alcohol. So, you can read about that in... Uh, Numbers chapter 6, so so Samson delivered his people from the Philistines, the enemies of Israel, and Jesus delivered his people from sin and death, and one day he's going to deliver them from the same enemies that Samson did, but, uh, yeah. But, uh, one day he'll come in glory. And, uh, these people that say that Jesus came in 70 AD, uh, yeah, well, they want you to think that this evil present evil world is, uh, the kingdom of Christ right now. Yeah, and he's ruling and reigning in your hearts. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, instead of listening to people, people ought to just read their Bibles. Uh, you know, get a King James Bible and read it. James chapter 1 says, If any lack understanding, let him ask of God. You know, ask in prayer for understanding. You'll get it. So... What can I tell you? But I think that's about it. Um, I would definitely uh, avoid anything with a you wish flavor. You know? <laughs> yeah, the J word. Yeah. Yeah. They are definitely not going to tell you anything truthful because you know what if they truly believed in the messiah they would call themselves christians now you don't read anything about uh messianic you know who's in the new testament you don't read that no they were called christians 
You can read in Acts 11.26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. But if you listen to the you know who's, they'll say, "Oh, well that 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 doesn't mean uh, that doesn't mean anything." You know, they'll they try to discount and discredit this. So, so in, let's go back a couple of verses. Acts eleven twenty four. Uh, Let's go back a little further, I guess. Twenty-two. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they should cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people were added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to, to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there's actually Hebrew roots people will tell you, well, this is this is th that that's a derogatory nurse, uh, name there, calling themselves Christians. Yeah, they do. They 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 will actually tell you this to your face. See, the New Testament, Greek, New Testament. Uh, they hate it. What do you think they consider the most anti-Semitic country in Europe is? Greece. Why? Well, they gave us the New Testament. And second of all, Greece is one of the most Christian countries on the face of this earth. I mean, they hate it. All right, let's read Acts 26. Paul, you know... Uh, you know, the people that hate Paul and say Paul's a false apostle, you got to take the book of Acts and rip it out of the Bible. Well, just rip the whole Bible, you know, uh, from Matthew on. Just rip the whole New Testament out. They hate the New Testament because they hate Christ and they hate Paul and they hate everything to do with Christ, Christians, Jesus, anything. They hate it. They really do. They're devils. Acts 26, verse 1. All right, Paul, back story here. Paul's been arrested, and he's being brought to King Agrippa for trial, for being a troublemaker, because he's proclaiming Christ. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. All right, so Paul, you're on trial. You're allowed. To, you're allowed to speak. Paul speaking, verse two. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Paul was accused of the Jews. Imagine that. Especially because I know thee, know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews. Yeah, they know. They know me from my very beginning. When I was a young kid, they know me which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope 
of the promise made of God unto our fathers. Unto which promise our 12 tribes. What? 12 tribes? Uh, the church says that uh, the 10 northern tribes are lost. Well, they're only lost to the church. They're not lost to God. They weren't lost to Paul either, because guess what? Paul knew where the 12 tribes were, because he went to them. He went to Italy. He went to Greece. He went to Galatia. Some people say Galatia was uh, France. Others say it was uh, near the Baltic region. I don't know. Near the Black Sea and all that. I, I don't know. But Paul went to the 12 tribes. Unto which promise our 12 tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Romans? No. I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Well, guess what, people? Jesus raised the dead. Um, do you know that, uh, I think it was Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, he raised the dead. Yeah, a prophet. Verse 9, I thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. There you go, Jesus of Nazareth. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. Wow, they were put to death. Tell that to the pre-trib rapture crowd. Oh, God would never let us suffer for uh, Jesus', Jesus sake. Uh, uh, we're the bride of Christ, and, and God's not a wife beater. And you wonder why I hate these people. One day, every pre-trib rapture teacher is going to be a false prophet. And you know what the Bible says to do with false prophets? It involves getting stoned, and it doesn't uh, talk about uh, having a marijuana card either. No. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them, and I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceeding mad, exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. You know, I wonder what the guys that were with Paul who, you know, all this stuff happened. I wonder what, I wonder what happened to them. You know, I wonder what story they told. You know, that would have been an interesting thing. Did they come to Christ? Did they reject Christ? I, you know, the Bible doesn't talk about it. So I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And we were, when, and, and when we were all fallen to the earth. Huh. Looks like Paul wasn't the only one that fell to the earth. I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Yeshua HaMashiach? No. I am Jesus. I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, 
to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Is Judaism under the power of Satan? That's what I get out of this. And from the power of Satan unto God that they might that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance from them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent. Boy, you don't hear that taught with the Yeshua crowd, do you? Repentance? No. That they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes, the Romans caught me in the temple. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. But, but, but it was the Romans. Well, that's... That's why they don't like the New Testament. Because it exposes their lies. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Not the Romans. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the peoples and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spoke for himself, Festus with a, said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. He's saying, Paul, you're crazy. All this learning is making you insane. But he, Paul, said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am not persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. You know, he's like, all these things, you've heard all these things. You know, all the all these stories coming out of Jerusalem and everything else. You know, this none of this stuff was done in secret. Verse 27, Paul says, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, listen to this. Then Agrippa, King Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost persuaded it. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. What did Paul say? Oh, no, no, King Agrippa, don't, you don't want to be a Christian. That's a dirty, nasty word. Uh, no, 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 no. We're Messianic Jews. Uh, Except for Paul didn't say that, did he? No. No. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together, such as I am, except these bonds. Did Paul say, oh, oh, don't use that Christian word. That's a nasty word. See, the Messianics, they're not Christians. They admit it by calling themselves Messianics. If they were Christians, they would call themselves Christians. They're not. Which is why I don't believe anything they tell me. Nothing. Nothing. They start talking about law keeping. Well, I'll believe them when they start uh, grabbing rocks and heading towards San Francisco. 
then I might believe them. Yeah, you want to keep Torah? Yeah, go to San Francisco and keep Torah. No, no, they just want to, they just want you to keep the Sabbath, which uh, Christ used to tell the, the guy that he healed, take up thy bed and walk. And then the you-know-whos were saying, it's not lawful for you to carry your bed on the Sabbath day. So make your choice. You're going to believe Jesus? Or are you going to believe the Messianics? Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, not only you, but also all that hear me this day, we're both all together, uh, we're both almost and all together, such as I am, except these bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor and Bernice, and they that sat with him. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, this, this man doth nothing worthy of death or bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. See, he was accused of the you-know-whos, but Paul was a Roman citizen. So he said, well, I should be judged by Caesar, not these you-know-whos that are, you know, the ones that uh, said he was, there were, verse 21, he says, they caught him in the temple and went about to kill him. Yeah. You know, when people refuse to call themselves Christians and they refuse to use the name Jesus, watch out. Watch out. And by the way, I'm on Telegram, and uh, if I ever get deleted from Tube, you'll know where I'm at. All right, well, this is the end. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.